Okay, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about why we have this requirement that the region we're working on be simply connected. Before I do that, I just want to point out, I mentioned before when we talked about the test for a conservative vector field, that there's a similar test if you're working in three space. Just wanted to point out that's essentially in homework problem 29. In homework problem 29, you prove that if you have a vector field in three space, certain partial derivatives of the component functions are equal. And those end up being essentially the mixed second partials for your potential function where you're just mixing and matching so that the two mixed partials you get with respect to x and y are equal. The two mixed partials you get with respect to y and z are equal. And the two mixed partials you get with respect to x and z are equal. That problem doesn't explicitly state that if those equations hold on a simply connected region, your vector field is conservative but that is true. So I just wanted to let you know where you would find that. It's homework question 29. Okay, so now, if I have a region in two space, I've drawn here, this is meant to be R2 minus the origin. Now I didn't bother to shade everything because then it would have been just too crowded. But if I'm working with R2 minus the origin, so that's a region that is not simply connected because it has a hole in it. The hole, of course, is the origin, okay? And so if I were to have a vector field, f of x, y, equaling p, q, where those are functions of x and y, and if I were to satisfy that the partial of p with respect to y equal the partial of q with respect to x, why doesn't that mean that it's conservative that I can find a vector fun a, a potential function for it? Because if you think about it, if I were to take a look just at this region right here, that's simply connected. So if I did have that the partial of p with respect to y was equal to the partial of q with respect to x, I'd be able to find a potential function on that region. And, well, that region there is also simply connected, I'd be able to find a potential function there. I'm sort of breaking it into four because I'm thinking quadrants, but I don't even have to break it up into four pieces. Um, I'm going to. This region is simply connected. I could find a potential function there. This region is simply connected. I could find a potential function there. The problem is I can't assume that the same potential function will work all the way around. There will be a potential function that works in each of those regions, but it's not necessarily going to be the same one. Okay. So I want to just give an example, not even thinking in terms of vector fields, but just thinking in terms of a very simple function where I can come up with something, essentially in each of the four quadrants, but I can't come up with one function that works everywhere. And what I'm going to try to come up with is just a function. We'll call it f of x, y, that gives me theta, that gives me the polar coordinate theta described in terms of rectangular coordinates. Okay. So if I have a point here, x, y, in quadrant 1, I can easily do that. If I'm saying, okay, I want to describe theta, I can just use right triangle trigonometry. And I could say in quadrant one, I can basically just say f of x, y is going to equal arc sine of y over root x squared plus y squared. <laughs> this would be y, this would be root x squared plus y squared. And in quadrant one, I could use any inverse trig function. So I could use inverse cosine and say it's inverse cosine of x over root x squared plus y squared. I could use inverse tangent. I'm purposely not using inverse tangent or secant. I'm choosing a function that's defined everywhere. So if I used inverse tangent, I'd never get pi over 2. But I can get pi over 2 if I'm using this. So this, this would work in quadrant one, even including the endpoints. If I'm here so that my y value is 0, I'd be getting arc sine of 0, which is just 0. And if I'm here so that 
essentially y and the square root of x squared plus y squared would be the same, because x would just be 0, then I'm looking at arc sine of 1, which is pi over 2. <laughs> However, while the notion of what's an a the angle I make with the positive x-axis still makes sense over here in quadrant 2, this formula is no longer going to work because arc sine can only spit out an angle between negative pi over 2 and positive pi over 2. So if I move over to quadrant 2, I can come up with a different function. So I'll call this f1. That's the function in quadrant 1. f2 of xy, I'm going to stick with using arc sine, but now I'm sort of working with my reference angle right here. Okay. Now, over here, this would be y, this would be root x squared plus y squared, and notice y is still positive since we're in quadrant 2. So if I were to take arc sine of y over root x squared plus y squared, it would give me this reference angle, so theta would just be pi minus arc sine of y over root x squared plus y squared similar formula because it's a similar idea, but it's not the same formula. Now if I move into quadrant 3, now I'm going to get f3 of xy. Okay. I'm still trying to get just the angle that I'm making with the x-axis here. This would be my reference angle alpha. Notice in quadrant 3, y is going to actually be negative. Okay. So, arc sine would be the negative acute angle um, that I would have that would actually be in quadrant 4. So I can play with that. Now let's see. Arc sine of y over root x squared plus y squared is no longer this reference angle. It's the opposite of that reference angle. So once again, I would actually want pi minus arc sine of y over root x squared plus y squared because this would be pi minus the opposite of that reference angle alpha, which would be pi plus alpha, which is what I want. Okay. So the same formula is working here in quadrants 2 and 3. Let's move to quadrant 4. Okay. Now, in quadrant 4, I've got a couple of options. I can get an angle that I make with the positive x-axis by just using arc sine of y over root x squared plus y squared. That's going to give me an angle between negative pi over 2 and 0 if I'm in quadrant 4. So what's nice about that is I'd be going, here's negative pi over 2, we increase, we're 0 here, and then that carries on and it's the same function that works here in quadrant 1. So I get one function that works in quadrants 4 and 1. The problem is that's going to mean that I jump when I cross over here. So we're increasing from 0, 0, 0. We're approaching 3 pi over 2, and suddenly we jump to negative pi over 2. I can't put those pieces together continuously. Now, if I want to, if I want to make it continuous here, I could. I could say, OK, so let's see. This is going to be, here's my reference angle alpha. Okay, again arc sine, though, is going to be a negative angle because y is now negative. So I could say this is going to be 2 pi would be minus alpha, but I can just say that's plus arc sine of y over root x squared plus y squared <laughs> because arc sine, since it's a negative angle, would be the opposite of my reference angle. So that works. And then I would be continuously coming around. It would increase to 3 pi over 2. It would keep increasing. We're approaching 2 pi, and then suddenly when we jump into quadrant 1, we're back down to 0. I can't piece these together, so I get one continuous function so that as I go around and theta is increasing, I somehow manage to come back to 0. Okay. So I can get a function in each of those regions, but it's a different function. And so I can't get one function that works for all of them. And that's the thing that we risk if we have a situation where we have a vector field and we're able to verify that the partial of p with respect to y is equal to the partial of q with respect to x, 
Um, but I don't have a simply connected region. I might have a situation like this where I can get a function, give me any point, I can get a function that works at and near that point, but I can't get one function that works everywhere. Okay. Now, important note, however, that is not to say that I can't have a conservative vector field defined on a region that's not simply connected. It's just that the test that we have doesn't work. So if you remember, if I have f of r, an inverse square field, we actually proved that this was conservative on its domain. And that's because we found, well, we were given a potential function and we verified that it worked everywhere. Now the domain of this is exactly this, it's r2 minus the origin. So here's a situation where if I were to write this out component-wise, I could verify that the partial of p with respect to y was equal to the partial of q with respect to x. That wouldn't be enough for me to know that this was conservative everywhere. But it is conservative everywhere on its domain. What I would have to do is I would have to go through and I would have to find a potential function in each of my regions, and then I would just have to check does the same potential function work everywhere? Okay, It might, and in this case it does, but it's not guaranteed to. So if your region is not simply connected, and you've got that the partial of p with respect to y equals the partial of q with respect to x, you can go ahead and try to find a potential function, but you have to check and see whether that actually works on the entire not simply connected region. It might, but it might not.